Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will demonstrate how to configure TLS or Secure Communications for the Avaya Aura Conferencing 7.x elements. All of the configuration required to configure TLS for Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 is actually done from the Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 Element Manager console, which is what I have open here. And in this case, I've already imported all of my certificates that I'll be using, these SSL certificates, to configure TLS between the various, uh, the various conferencing elements. So I've already done that, and I've actually imported them from the system manager that this conferencing server is associated with. If you do need to import more certificates or replace an existing certificate that's on the conferencing server, uh, you can do that either by uploading it from your PC using the key store option there under the security and certificate management menu, or you can also uh, download certificates to the conferencing server automatically using an enrollment request, which will pull the, uh, the certificate from System Manager. And again, that's what I've done for all of the certificates that I've loaded here on my conferencing server. But I'm going to just briefly show you which certificates I have loaded and then we'll go through actually assigning them to the various conferencing network elements for TLS configuration. So first we'll click on the key store menu option there on the left under security and certificate management. This shows me a list of certificates that are loaded into the conferencing system here. And in the column on the left, you can see that I have a separate certificate for each conferencing element. And the reason for this is because each certificate, while it may come from the same source, needs to have a different common name associated with it. Uh, and that common name needs to either be the IP address or the host name of the conferencing element that you'll be assigning the certificate to. So more details on when to use an IP address versus a fully qualified domain name, depending on the certificate you're importing, can be found in the Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 documentation that's available on support.avaya.com. And the specific document you would want to look in is called Deploying Avaya Aura Conferencing 7. Now, once we have all of our certificates loaded, we can go through and assign the various certificates to the specific network element we want to use or configure as a TLS. Now, before we go through and assign these certificates, I do, it is important to mention that currently all of my AAC7 elements are actually offline right now, so they're not active. Um, the one exception to that is the element manager, which is how I'm accessing this console here. Uh, that is the only active AAC7 element uh, that I have right now. And the reason for that is because as you apply certificates to these various network elements, you do have to restart each element. So it's easier if you just have them offline to begin with, and then you're going to restart the element manager first, and then you can bring all the other elements online after you've assigned the, the certificates to them. So that's the reason I have it in this state right now. And we're going to begin by uh, selecting the element manager element. And you can see there, all I do is I select the top level folder for element manager. I don't expand it any further. And this pops up a small box for me. And what I do is I select the element manager from the list there. It's the only item in the list. Uh, in my case, because I only have one element manager. And then I would click the edit button, which is actually the minus and the plus icon there. And you have a couple of options here. Uh, and you'll see this checkbox in most of the elements, the enable HTTP port checkbox. So if you have that enabled and you assign a certificate, you can use either HTTP or HTTPS to access this element. In most cases, because we want this to be strictly a secure communications environment, we're going to uncheck the HTTP port. But that's not necessarily a requirement uh, to enable SSL or TLS communication between these elements. And all we need to do here is select the appropriate HTTPS certificate for the internal OAM uh, interface. 
The external interface, as you can see there, is not used. The IP address is set to none, so there's no reason for us to change the certificate there. But we do need to change the certificate for the AAC7, the internal OAM interface that's listed there. And you'll notice that the certificate I select is the certificate that I've named or that I've specified the element manager should use. Uh, in the previous list, we looked at the list of certificates, and this is the certificate that has the appropriate fully qualified domain name associated with it for the AAC7 element manager. So that's why I need to make sure and use that certificate. Now once we click apply, you'll notice that the, the bar at the top changed colors from green to blue. And this is because we now have a warning alarm uh, that exists there. And this warning, we'll look at it, it, it exists because we changed certificates on the element manager. So we'll just go up to the bar there, we'll right click and select logical view. This will give us a view of all the alarms on the system. From there we see the element manager has the warning alarm associated with it. So we'll drop down that box and take a look at what that alarm is. And as you can see from the window there, it basically says exactly what we did, which is that the HTTPS certificate has changed for the element manager and that we now need to restart that network element. But before we restart that network element, I'm actually going to go through and assign the certificates for the other AAC7 network elements and then we'll restart the element manager and finally we'll start each individual AAC7 element. So the next cer certificate that we're going to assign is for the provisioning manager and for the provisioning manager we're going to again edit the element that's listed there. We only have one provisioning manager in this implementation. That's all we have to worry about configuring. You'll notice that there are two categories of configuration here when you open the or when you edit the provisioning manager. There's a category specifically for provisioning and then another one for the uh, personal agent, otherwise known as the collaboration agent. So we'll start by configuring the provisioning manager element there, uh, the first section. And all we need to specify is the internal OAM HTTPS certificate again there. The internal interface is the only one that exists on the provisioning manager. So again, we'll select a certificate that is specific to that element. In other words, it has either the fully qualified domain name or the IP address of that element associated with it. And we'll uncheck the box as well that says enable HTTP port. So we can only use HTTPS to communicate with this element. Next, the personal agent or the collaboration agent there will uncheck the box that says enable HTTP port. We will select a certificate that has that is specific for the per personal agent or collaboration agent. You can see I've imported that uh, certificate already and I've assigned that to that element as the HTTPS certificate. Now the collaboration agent also uses SIP to communicate with uh, various other network elements. And so we will select the TLS option for the SIP communications, which is secure SIP. And we'll also specify the uh, AAC7 PA certificate uh, to be used by that communication. Now we didn't get a warning for that network element uh, that the certificate had changed like we did with the element manager. And again, that's because the uh, provisioning manager is offline right now. Now what we're going to do is configure the application server for TLS. So we'll select the application servers folder there from the menu on the left. And we'll edit the only item that we have listed there. And from this pop-up here, you can tell that the uh, application server uses TCP by default, which is unsecure SIP communications. So we're going to change that to TLS. And then again, we're going to select the appropriate certificate for this network element, which is the AAC7 underscore AS certificate that I loaded earlier. And once we click apply, we can then close that small pop-up box there. One other important note about configuring TLS here on the application server is you notice that it's you can enable either TCP or TLS. You cannot have them both enabled simultaneously. Uh, this is important because when you configure AAC7, uh, on the via or a system manager and you build what's known as a SIP entity link between session manager and the via or a conferencing application server which is what we're editing here the SIP entity link does need to match the protocol that's selected here whether it's TCP or TLS 
So just keep that in mind that if you had this working before and you go in and select uh, TLS here, that you also need to change your entity link in System Manager. Next, we'll go in and edit the certificates for the media server. So for this, we need to expand the folder that says media servers and clusters. And then we'll select the media servers folder there. And again, we'll edit the only media server that we have administered. From here, we're going to configure both SIP and SOAP to use TLS or Secure Communications. So first of all, we'll check, check the box that says Enable SIP TLS. And we can leave the, the TLS port as 5063, that's fine. We'll change the SIP certificate to the certificate that we've previously loaded specifically for the Avaya Media Server. And we'll check the box to Enable SOAP slash TLS. And again, the SOAP certificate should be the same certificate we selected for the SIP certificate, which is specifically for the Avaya Media Server. And then we can click Apply and close that box once again. Now for the web conferencing configuration, we, we need to expand the web conferencing folder there. We're going to start by configuring the secure communications certificates for the web conferencing management servers. So we'll select that folder, which will pop up a list of the web conferencing management servers we have. Right now we only have one, so we'll edit that one. And we need to uncheck the box that says enable HTTP port because we only want to use secure communications. And we're going to select the HTTPS certificate. Again, the certificate we previously loaded is specifically loaded for this network element. So we'll select the WCMS certificate and then we'll click apply and close that box. And finally, we're going to edit the certificate for the web conferencing server, which is the last folder listed there. We'll select that. And we'll go ahead and edit the only web conferencing server that we have listed there. From here, you'll want to uncheck the enable HTTP port. Again, if you don't want to have uh, HTTP access to the web conferencing server, and you only want to use HTTPS or secure HTTP, you can uncheck that box, which I will do. Now for the web conferencing, we're only going to assign a certificate to the external interface there. You could also do the internal interface, uh, especially if you have a specific certificate you would like to use enterprise-wide, you can do, uh, or you can use the same certificate for both the internal and external, that's fine. The advantage of having the HTTPS external certificate be separate from the internal certificate is that the external certificate is what will be presented to users who log into the, the web conferencing server through their browser. That certificate needs to be installed as a trusted certificate on those PCs. So there may be cases where you have a separate certificate that's trusted by your users' PCs uh, than you do for internal communications between the conferencing elements. And that's the reason you have the separation there. In my case, the AAC7 underscore WCS1 certificate that I've loaded contains the fully qualified domain name of my web conferencing server. And so that certificate I'm going to assign for the external certificate also needs to be installed as a trusted certificate on any, anyone's who PC who tries to access the web conferencing server. So I'll go ahead and choose that. In this case, I'm going to, to go ahead and leave the internal certificate as default. It's really up to you if you want to use the same certificate for both. Now, once we click apply and close that window, what we're ready to do is restart the element manager network element. Remember, that was the first certificate we assigned. And the reason we need to restart that is so that the new certificate takes effect. Once that's restarted, we can then go through and start all of the other network elements for Avaya or Conferencing 7. And at this point, you have successfully configured TLS Secure Communications for Avaya or Conferencing 7. Thank you for your time today. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.